Uh, so thank you, Francesco, for the invitation. Thank you, Dejeder, also for the invitation. Um, so um, I am going to um, uh, discuss some general aspects on the problem of uh, how to do how to perform excel state molecular dynamics simulations in molecules. And uh, I will um, uh, look at the problem from a quantum uh, mechanical uh, perspective and from a quantum classical perspective. So aiming really at doing uh, molecular dynamic simulations. Uh, one question, I have here this, uh, wait, I need, okay. Wait. Um, do you see properly the screen? Is it so, okay for everybody, okay. So, first of all, I will start uh, with some words uh, on the uh, like on the, uh, the physical setup. Okay, what are the kinds of pro problems that uh, I'm going to uh, I, I would like to describe? So, uh, so first of all, I'm interested in describing and studying finite site systems. So I'm thinking about like uh, isolated molecules in the gas phase. But uh, what I'm I will talk about what I will describe can be also be extended uh, in some way with, yeah, can be also be extended to treat uh, environment uh, system uh, that, that are uh, embedded in an environment, for instance, in a solvent or in a protein. Um, I will be looking at uh, ultra fast dynamics. Okay, so typical time scales for the processes that um, that I look at uh, uh, are few hundreds of femtoseconds. Um, then I will very often use uh, this perspective, so the perspective of photoactivated processes. And so I suppose uh, that the dynamics of my system is initiated by photoabsorption, usually photons in the visible UV range. Uh, but uh, everything that I, that I what I will say. Um, can be also extended towards treat the treatment of uh, driven systems or other kinds of processes like collisions. Uh, in general, I will, uh, even though I treat uh, uh, photoactivated processes, uh, uh, light matter interaction is not um, described explicitly, but uh, I will assume some kind of perturbation theory approach. However, the inclusion of classical light in the problem is, is possible, is a possible extension. And um, so the main point of all, uh, of all the problems that I'm going to look at is the last one, uh, the fact that the bon oppenheimer approximation breaks down. So I cannot use the bon oppenheimer approximation to describe the systems that I'm the, the, the processes that I'm interested in. And, um, Therefore, uh, I, I will have to treat the electronic transitions. So, so uh, basically in the problem, I have to include several electronic states. Uh, so I am going to give you three examples of systems that I studied uh, that require uh, an excited state uh, uh, treatment to, 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 to be properly observed in simulation. So the first process is uh, the, the, first, uh, the first situation is a prototypical uh, process that is often used as, uh, uh, as an example of excited state process is the photoinduced isomerization of the retinal, of the retinal uh, in rhodopsin, that is the first step in the process of vision, and it is one of the fastest photochemical reactions known in nature. And uh, so the process you can see it here in this um, in this movie here. This, I didn't do this movie, but I took it from YouTube. But I found it very nice because really it shows uh, everything that, that that happens with the full system. So here in green, uh, here you have the rhodopsin protein, and in the in the cavity here uh, inside there is this molecule. This is a retinal molecule, and when it is irradiated with visible light, it gets excited electronically, and uh, an, isomeriz an isomerization takes place. And uh, so we have studied this. Um, uh, this, uh, this process in a smaller retinal molecule, which is this one, by using a reduced dimensionality approach. And we basically studied the, 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 the photo-induced rotation or isomerization around this uh, double uh, carbon bond. And as you can see here, there are some results of quantum dynamical evolution, which is represented by the nuclear wave function that propagates in time in green. And we compared this quantum mechanical evolution with the um, a molecular dynamics approach based on trajectories. And as you can see here, two states, two electronic states need to be included in the problem. S0 is the electronic ground state, S1 is the first electronic excited state. And uh, basically at the initial time, the molecule is excited, uh, the system is excited on S1. 
uh, you can see it here now at the initial time, you see there is basically only population here in the excited state. And within 200 of time to, 200 time to second, uh, the system relaxes uh, via these uh, two crosses here. There are two degeneracy points between the excited state and the ground state. And uh, as time goes on, the, the ground state gets, uh, gets uh, populated and the system and the, here the molecule basically rotates. Another example that we're currently studying is uh, a collision process. So it's not a photoactivated process. It's the collision of oxygen with the ethylene molecule. And what is interesting in this, uh, in this process is the fact that despite um, uh, the fact that uh, uh, there are only light, uh, um, light elements, so hydrogen, carbon, and oxygen, uh, there are some nuclear configurations for which uh, the, the spin orbit coupling is important. And this is shown here in this figure that I took from, from this paper. And instead here, this, uh, this trajectory here is uh, one simulation that we have done uh, with, uh, with this code. Uh, so um, basically, so the, 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 what we can see here is the, the pink lines are uh, triplet states, okay? Uh, they are um, electronic triplet states, and the, the blue lines here, they refer to the singlet state. So the system enters in this direction, and when it reaches this nuclear configuration here, you see uh, here that uh, the, the triplet state and um, the ground state, uh, they're closing energy, and due to spin orbit coupling, that you can observe a transition between the two the two electronic states. And I will go back a little bit on the, in, in a couple of slides on this on this point. Uh, this is another study that we have done some some years ago on the ultra fast photo induced ring opening process in oxyrain. Uh, so you can see here this is the oxygen molecule, and after you excite it, uh, you excite it on uh, on the second uh, ex electronic excited state, you can activate this uh, ring opening process. And um, so if you look uh, at, the, the, at the dynamics of the molecule in a reduced dimensional space, which is here represented by these two coordinates that are the, the, the length of the two uh, C of bonds, uh, you can see that if you prepare uh, initial time of the molecule in closed form in the second excited state, it goes down, to, it relaxes to, to the first excited state, and you have some trajectories that open by breaking this bond here, and some trajectory that instead uh, lead to this open configuration by breaking these other two bond. And um, as you can see here, to in order to mimic this somehow quantum mechanical effect of uh, separation of uh, basically the nuclear uh, trajectories that go into in different uh, configurations, so they spread in space, so you have to run a lot of trajectories. Here we run 100 trajectories and basically we obtain that more or less 50-50 they open in these, two, in these two configurations as it would be expected. So uh, now basically uh, everything I'm going to say in the following and um, is uh, how to deal with this kind of processes. How do I arrive at treating, uh, at treating this, uh, these processes here? So, um, Let's look first at the schematic representations of the processes that I, uh, that I described before. And uh, I do this by analyzing this diagram here called the Jabloski diagram. Um, and so basically in this diagram, uh, I represented the electronic energy levels as functions on the nuclear configurations, which are the surfaces here, or the, the, the curves here. So they represent the electronic energy uh, energies here as a function of a one-dimensional coordinate that is, for instance, in this one-dimensional case, uh, for instance, for a, diat for a diatomic molecule could, could be uh, the internuclear distance. And you see that the blue surfaces here are indicated with S, they are singlet states. Uh, the red uh, curve here indicated with T is, uh, is a triplet state. And then the arrows, uh, they, they represent different, uh, um, different phenomena. So the, the black uh, arrows pointing upward, they represent photo absorption. So if I prepare my molecule in the ground state, it gets excited by absorbing photons. And then uh, the other uh, arrows, the wiggly arrows and these uh, arrows here, they represent uh, uh, relaxation pathways. Uh, so what happens after the initial excitation? 
So the wiggly lines, they represent uh, um, no radiative uh, relaxation pathways. And uh, instead, the straight lines here, they represent the radiative relaxation pathways. Uh, so the, the, the green lines uh, uh, indicated by IC, for the, which stands for internal conversion, uh, they represent uh, um, relaxation pathways that are mediated by the non-adiabatic coupling between the electrons and nuclei. Non-adiabatic meaning uh, beyond the adiabatic approximation, so beyond the born of phenomenon approximation, which happens uh, in, uh, in situations when um, the, the nuclear motion, okay, so induces this kind of transitions because the nuclei basically move too fast uh, and therefore the electrons cannot react instantaneously to the new configurations on the nuclei. And so uh, you, you, you observe this kind of uh, non-adiabatic uh, transitions. Uh, the IS, IS, ISC instead here indicates uh, uh, intersystem crossing. So these are uh, again no radiative relaxation pathways that are mediated by spin orbit coupling. So and in fact, as you can see here, they um, uh, they take place between uh, states of different uh, spin multiplicities. I forgot instead to say that internal conversions they take place between states uh, electronic states with the same spin multiplicity. I will not be dealing with the uh, fluorescence phenomena, indicated by here F, and phosphorescence phenomena. Um, they are radiative relaxation pathways uh, uh, happening on longer timescales than what I'm interested in, and uh, without taking into account explicitly the effect of the presence of photons in the problem, but we cannot describe this kind of process. Uh, so I will uh, now just uh, say a few words uh, about uh, the born phenomenon approximation and the underlying uh, um, hypothesis to be able to treat uh, a dynamical problem within born Oppenheimer. And then I will um, show how the breakdown of these approximations is taken to, into account for a beyond the born Oppenheimer uh, uh, approach. And then I will say a few words about what are the ingredients that are necessary to perform uh, an exaggerated molecular dynamics calculation. And uh, I will... Um, uh, show a simple application on a model system uh, comparing quantum and quantum classical uh, dynamics. We're here for quantum classical dynamics. I mean, uh, really doing a molecular dynamic simulation when the nuclei are approximated classically and therefore uh, evolved according to classical equations of motion in the presence of the quantum mechanical electronic uh, effect. And then uh, I will conclude uh, with just some uh, say, sa challenges, open questions, points, which one should think about uh, when uh, one want, wants to embark uh, in the um, uh, in, in doing molecular dynamic sim simulations with excited states. Uh, so the problem that we that we um, want to treat is uh, is this one. So the time dependent Schrodinger equation. I want to solve the time dependent Schrodinger equation for a system of interacting electrons and nuclei. Tn here is the nuclear Hamiltonian. Hel is the electronic Hamiltonian. Sorry, Tn is the nuclear kinetic energy. HL is the electronic Hamiltonian that contains uh, the electronic kinetic energies, uh, energy and the interaction potentials. I am not including in this case spin orbit coupling. Um, and so if we want to solve this equation, we want to solve this equation to get in principle the, 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 the molecular wave function psi that depends on the electronic uh, positions, on the nuclear positions and on time. So now, uh, if these three conditions are valid, then I can use the born phenomenon approximation to describe, to, to solve uh, approximately this, uh, this, um, this equation. And I would say these three uh, approximations are uh, basically as, um, are really as strongly connected to each other. So uh, the first uh, um, hypothesis is that uh, um, the typical timescale of, uh, time of electronic and nuclear motion can be separated adiabatically. This means that the nuclei move very slow and therefore the, um, uh, the electrons can react instantaneously to every new configuration of the nuclei. And therefore this means that if at time zero we put the electrons in a, in, in a certain state, it will always, uh, they, they will always stay there in the same, in the same eigenstate uh, along the dynamics is, if nuclear dynamics is low enough. 
And this could also be expressed in another way, meaning that uh, the occupied uh, electronic uh, state is well separated from all the other electronic states, uh, energetically speaking. And this also translates to the fact that uh, the non-adiabatic coupling between the occupied electronic state and all other states uh, are negligible. Okay, so in the, in the born oppenheimer approximation, this non-adiabatic coupling between the electronic states is, is negligible. So if these uh, conditions are satisfied, then I can uh, write the molecular wave function in an approximate form uh, by using a single product of a nuclear wave function and an electronic term. Uh, and notice here the electronic term uh, depends parametrically on the nuclear configuration. And uh, um, this GS here stands, for instance, for ground state to say, to, to, to imply that the, the, the electronic state here is an eigenstate, uh, is the lowest energy eigenstate of the electronic Hamiltonian for every nuclear uh, configuration, okay? Because here the electronic Hamiltonian depends on the nuclear configuration. And um, therefore in this approximation, the, um, uh, the, 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 the nuclear part of the system of, of, the, of, this, uh, of this wave function is the only part that depends on time. And um, so basically uh, the, the electronic part is obtained with this constraint, okay? It's constrained to be an eigenstate of, of, the, of the electronic Hamiltonian. And then if this product form is inserted into the full time dependent Schrodinger equation, what comes out is a new, uh, time-dependent Schrodinger equation, but now only for the nuclear wave function, and uh, the effect of the electrons is represented here by this uh, by this potential. Oops, I'm sorry. This should move. Okay, so if this is just uh, um, uh, just to show you an example, what happens to oxyrane if we constrain the dynamics to be uh, uh, to, to to stay in the in the in the ground state? You see here, we don't observe anymore the the the, 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 the ring opening that I was showing to you before. So the dynamics is really is really different if we include the effect of the excited state, or if we stay we stay adiabatically in the ground state. And uh, another thing that I want to add uh, to add here is the following: that uh, sometimes uh, uh, the the the, the Born-Oppenheimer approximation is mistaken to be uh, the uh, a classical to be related to the classical approximation of, for the nuclei, but this is not true because uh, these basically these three points uh, uh, summarize the Born-Oppenheimer approximation, and uh, with these conditions here, I I was able to determine a new time-dependent Schrödinger equation, fully quantum mechanical, only for the evolution of the of the of the nuclear uh, of the nuclear wave function. Now, uh, beyond the Born-Oppenheimer approximation, uh we cannot write anymore the molecular wave function as a single product of an eigenstate times a time dependent wave function, but we have to correct this approximation. And there are mainly two ways to do that. Let's say the, 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 the standard approach is to use this bon wang expansion. So basically you, you expand the, the molecular wave function as an infinite sum of, of products where the basis is represented by the eigenstate of the electronic Hamiltonian. And then then each, uh, uh, each state of this, um, each term of this expansion is multiplied by a time dependent nuclear factor. Okay, so everything, all these terms, uh, they carry this uh, K uh, index here that represents the electronic states that are included in the problem. And another way, uh, another approach uh, is what we call the exact factorization. And this approach has been uh, uh, proposed in 2010 uh, uh, here in the group uh, of our Vardy Gross. And um, the difference between uh, the exact factorization and the born oppenheimer approximation is the fact that, I mean, you see there is a single product form, but uh, um, the, uh, the electronic wave function in the born oppenheimer approximation is static, is an eigenstate of the electronic problem, and instead here we let it, to, we let it be time dependent. And uh, in uh, this overview with the Basil Pouchot, we, we, we discussed uh, quite, quite nicely the differences in not um, in a technical way, the differences between the bon wang and the exact factorization. Uh, now, how do we see uh, by looking at the, for instance, at the potential energy surfaces that we have to go beyond the Born-Oppenheimer to treat uh, uh, a process? Um, so 
I'm showing to you here two examples. So, so this example is uh, the example of the collision reaction between uh, uh, oxygen and ethylene. You can see here that for some configurations, for not some nuclear configurations, uh, the two lowest singlet states and the two lowest triplet states are basically the same energy. So, so in, in this case here, this is really there is a breakdown for these configurations of the bond Oppenheimer approximation because we cannot say that one electronic state is far away uh, energetically from the others. And uh, these um, uh, potential energy surfaces, instead, uh, they kind of represent the potential energy surfaces for the photoisomerization of the, of the retinal that I showed you before also. And uh, you can see here, in this point here, the, the, the first six other states, the ground state, they are degenerate. And they are degenerate in a point that, and around it, the, the surfaces, uh, they, they, they show this uh, very typical conical uh, form uh, that is called the conical intersection, in fact. And here, the non adiabatic couplings are not negligible at all. They're actually singular. Okay, so here the non adiabatic coupling really is infinite, and this is a clear break breakdown also of the, of the bond of Penheimer approximation. So uh, now uh, I have to like describe, like, in a very qualitative way. Uh, how do we make the step between this representation of the quantum mechanical problem, so between the um, uh, time-dependent Schrodinger equation and this kind of uh, representation or what we have here, these surfaces here, or this Jablonski diagram that I showed you before. So uh, how do we go from the full molecular wave function to a schematic representation like, like this? So basically, we can say that we have to kind of deal with the problem in two steps. Okay, so first, we have to uh, forget about the nuclear kinetic energy and just look at the electronic Hamiltonian. And uh, this electronic Hamiltonian can give us information about electronic energies, non adiabatic couplings, and eventually spin orbit coupling. As I said, is not, uh, spin orbit coupling is not considered explicit here, but if I have also an additional term, this, this electronic spin orbit Hamiltonian will also give me information about the spin orbit coupling. And, Federica, uh, sì. Federica, can I ask a question here? Yeah. At this stage, do you have any um, constraint on the potential that actually enters in the electronic Hamiltonian, or it can be any potential whatsoever? It can be any potential. You mean Coulomb or stuff like this? Huh? No, the external, the time-dependent part. Ah. Yeah, yeah. Well, in principle, in this approach, I do not have, I'm not really considering uh, the external potential, but in principle, there's no, um, there is no limitation. So there is no constraint on the external potential. So there can be also a time dependent external potential, but there, there are some subtleties that I will uh, uh, mention in the challenges, uh, in the challenges um, slide. Okay, perfect. In principle, Thanks. I can have it here. Yeah. Um, so basically, solving the electronic structure problem is the job of quantum chemistry. Okay, so let's say that uh, the electronic, the static, uh, um, for, for every nuclear um, configuration, electronic structure information can be provided by uh, quantum chemistry approaches, either by using uh, uh, density functional representation of, uh, of the electronic system or by using uh, wave function representation of the electronic system. And uh, once this problem is settled, okay, once uh, I know how to treat for every nuclear geometry the electronic problem, I can make my nuclei evolve. So I have to go back now to the full Hamiltonian. I can now treat the full Hamiltonian and I can perform nuclear dynamics. And what I'm mainly interested in would be to describe nuclear dynamics by using classical or classical like trajectories. And um, to do this, so to, really to construct a, a, an ab initio molecular dynamics set up for, uh, for evolving the trajectories and including the effect of uh, many electronic states, um, I will have also to, to say what are the forces okay, that I use to propagate my trajectories. Um, 
And uh, so because when we talk about classical trajectories, so we have to solve, basically we have just to solve the nuclear uh, um, uh, Newton's equation. In Newton's equation, I need to provide a force to be able to, 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 generate, to generate the trajectory. And um, when there are multiple uh, uh, electronic surfaces that are present in the problem, the, the, the question comes to like, what do, how, do I choose, how do I choose my potential? What is the actual potential that allows me to calculate the force? to propagate the trajectories. And uh, now I will uh, go to the application uh, in court section, uh, part of the talk in which I'm going to show you two um, ways to do, um, um, to, to, to evolve trajectories in a, in a problem involving uh, uh, two electronic states. And the system or the model I'm studying is this one, is a one dimensional model, which I think is very clear to see what is really happening uh, both at the quantum mechanical level and uh, at the, uh, the quantum classical molecular dynamic level. So the, the states here, the orange, this is the S0 uh, ground state. This is the first excited state. And they are represented as a function of some reaction coordinate. So here reaction coordinate uh, can be, um, uh, for instance, uh, the isomerization, uh, the, the torsion angle in the isomerization process that I, that I showed you before for the, for the retinal molecule. Okay, so this is just some general reaction coordinate. And uh, in the region here where the two surfaces, uh, they are close to each other, this is called an avoided crossing. And here, since the energies, uh, they are close, okay, the energy of the two states, uh, they, are, they, are, they are close, uh, the bono oppenheimer approximation breaks down. So this function here that you can see at different time steps uh, here. So this is this represents the nuclear uh, the nuclear wave packet. So it is prepared in the ground state. Then it is uh, instantaneously ex uh, instantaneously excited on the first excited state, and then the dynamics starts. Uh, it slow, it goes it slides down this surface. In this region here, you can clearly see a separation, okay, of the wave packet into portions. And in fact, at later times, you find uh, we can find a portion here on the excited state and a smaller portion here on the lower state. And, uh, and then they continue evolving, they come back, and so they keep crossing several times so the, 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 this coupling region here. And uh, what we would like to capture is really this, uh, this phenomenon of this uh, oscillation, basically these wave packets and this uh, uh, potential, uh, these two potentials uh, by using trajectories. And, uh, and in order, this is clear, in order to reproduce this branching uh, uh, wave packets, we have to use several trajectories. We cannot just launch one trajectory because it will never be able to follow um, diverging path in configuration space. So now here, this is uh, uh, exactly the, the, the result of uh, the exact propagation. So the, um, I solved basically the time dependent Schrodinger equation for about 200 femtoseconds. to seconds. And uh, when you see green, it means that the wave packet is associated to the excited state. When you see orange, it is associated to the ground state. Okay, so you can see that the wave packet really goes a bit everywhere in, uh, in space. The gray line is the sum of the two of the green and the and the and the and the orange portions and you can see that these wave packets so they um, as you can see for instance here they 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 can meet uh, uh, several times at this uh, the avoided crossing so when they come from different uh, uh, from different parts and they can interfere and now what we were trying to do is like to 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 see if we can actually get these uh, interferences uh, uh, by using uh, by using classical trajectories. And so, what we would like to do now is to basically replace the propagation of these uh, nuclear wave packets by using classical trajectories. So now here I am uh, uh, showing the, some results of, uh, the, of, of, of propagating classical trajectories. As reference, I show anyway here the nuclear the nuclear density, and uh, basically what uh, I launched the, the the simulation and I tell you what we're looking at. So basically, um, the what we would like to have first of all is that the trajectories follow the portion on the nuclear density. So we would like to see that the trajectories kind of sample in time the portions of, of, of our space, of nuclear configuration space, where the nuclear density is important. 
And this is basically uh, well reproduced by the trajectories. And uh, then um, this, so the points, maybe you understood that the points represent the trajectories. Okay, so the really, uh, the, my classical particles that uh, represent, that replace the nuclear wave function. And um, on the x-axis, on the, yeah, on the x-axis, I represent their position. And instead on the y-axis, I represent the potential that they feel and that I use to calculate the force. Okay, as you can see, the light blue dots not always uh, uh, feel the same potential as uh, the blue dots with this uh, yellow around. Okay, so this confirms the fact that uh, the, 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 the the trajectories, they, they, they feel different forces, okay? The, the forces are, are calculated in different ways. Now, the light blue dots, they are, uh, their, their dynamics is derived by using an approach based on the born wang expansion. The blue dots, instead, they are uh, propagated by using uh, uh, an approach, a molecular dynamics approach scheme that is derived from the exact factorization. And the main difference between the two sets of calculation is that light blue dots can be uh, propagated independently from each other. So I can basically launch one trajectory after the other. And instead, the blue dots with the yellow around, they represent trajectories that cannot be uh, propagated independently because they are coupled. So for those who uh, know a bit about this, so the, the light blue dots, they are propagated with the fewest switches, trajectory surface hopping approach using energy decoherence corrections. And instead, this is um, in the, the light blue dots, they are propagated by, uh, let's say, uh, a different version of surface hopping by using uh, couple trajectories and the fewest switches algorithm derived from the exact factorization. And um, now we can look at some, uh, um, uh, at some electronic properties. So for instance, here I calculate the, the population of the excited state. And um, so, in, uh, so in, uh, in green, the reference results from uh, exact calculations. Light blue, the, the, the results from the, um, from the um, independent trajectory uh, uh, method and uh, in light in, in in dark blue with the yellow around this is the couple trajectory method uh, as you can see all uh, in all cases uh, the s1 population at zero uh, time zero is one because the system is prepared in the excited state okay and then every time there is a nuclear wave packet that goes through uh, the, the the coupling region there is population exchange uh, towards uh, the to, uh, towards the ground state and so the s1 loses some population. With this uh, independent trajectory approach, the, 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 the electronic state loses uh, too much population. And instead, of by instead including the, uh, the, couple tra the, the coupling among the trajectory, we manage to, uh, to, to stay very close to exact results. And uh, so this is um, everything for the let's say, application part. And then uh, I just described in this slide some um, I say here challenges, but uh, like uh, points of reflection or points where developments could be made or improvements could be made. Okay. So, first of all, I didn't talk at all about uh, uh, how the, the, the initial conditions are prepared to evolve the trajectories. So, basically, to solve uh, again, to solve Newton's equation, I need, uh, uh, apart from the force uh, to evolve the trajectories, I also need to give a set of initial conditions. And uh, yeah, the question is how do I, how do, what, what is the proper way of sampling the initial conditions in this kind of simulations? And uh, but I, I do not have an answer for this, so I'm just basically uh, raising the question. And uh, another point, uh, which I believe is very important to think about, and uh, it, it, so it really the, the results of, of, of the simulation could depend on, on this choice, is the choice of the electronic representation for the dynamics. Electronic representation meaning the basis, okay, that, that I choose to, um, uh, to, to perform, to, 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 to calculate electronic properties. And this depends on the physical problem, on the quantum chemistry code that we use to do electronic structure calculations, and also on the algorithm, especially on the algorithm. Because 
uh, when the algorithm is basically an approximate version of the time-dependent Schrodinger equation. So the, 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 it's, uh, I mean, it's not strange that the approximations that we develop, they work better in a basis rather than another. So depending on which algorithm we use, we need to, we need to adapt also our representation of the electronic system. And this um, uh, could be related to what Francesco was asking before. Uh, so an, an explicit treatment of, 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 of an external potential in the, uh, in the, in the, in the time dependent Schrodinger equation, um, which is something that I haven't talked about uh, um, uh, explicitly, but uh, what we have uh, worked on recently is to um, um, extend the exact factorization approach to treat uh, in the Hamiltonian uh, the effect of a periodic perturbation, okay, on a, on a, like on a, peri on a, of a periodic drive. And we have done this by uh, coupling, uh, by combining the, the, the exact factorization with the Floquet formalism. And, uh, and also another thing that one should think about before embarking in uh, uh, molecular dynamics excited state simulations is uh, the, what are the codes that are available to do this, uh, what method is implemented in which code, what is the interface that this code provides. So um, for the moment, there are no many codes that uh, so basically there is uh, my code, uh, is, uh, GCDMQC, but uh, it's not yet interfaced with quantum chemistry uh, codes to do the dynamics, to do the electronic structure calculations. And there is is um, uh, next colleague from uh, from Halle who is developing uh, uh, a code that does that, that does the, 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 the exact factorization that performs uh, uh, molecular dynamic simulations based on, on the exact factorization but there are no other codes on the, or for the, to, the, uh, to the best of my knowledge that do this kind of, of dynamics. And instead, there are uh, many codes that are instead based on the on the bond wanger uh, on the bond wanger representation for the for the dynamics. So I'm done. So I will uh, uh, spend one minute to thank the people who have collaborated on the project that I talked about. So the work on the isomerization of the radical chromophore model has been basically done by Emanuele Marsili, who was an M2 uh, student uh, at the ICP a couple of years ago, and now he's uh, at Durham University as a PhD. And this work, has, this work has been done in collaboration with Massimo Livucci from Siena and David Lovernia, uh, the Institut de Chimie Physique, so it's a colleague uh, in Paris Saclay. Uh, the, the work on the ring opening process of oxygen has been done with Hardy Gross, who was before, uh, previously he was uh, uh, the Max Planck in Halle, now he's at the Hebrew University in Jerusalem, with Seun Kyu Min, who, who is uh, now a professor in, uh, in uh, Alsan in South Korea, and Ivano Tavernelli at IBM. Uh, the work on the collision dynamics with spin orbit coupling has been mainly done by Francesco Dalotta. He's a postdoc with us uh, that has been funded by, by Palm. And this is a collaboration uh, with David Lovernia and uh, Sabine Morisset and Nathalie Rougeau, who are at the uh, Institut de Sciences Moléculaires d'Orsay in Paris Saclay. And uh, the last applications that I showed in this uh, two level system with interference is this is a work uh, that has been done uh, together with uh, Carlotta Pironi. She's doing the PhD with me at in Paris Saclay and with Maurizio Persico at the university in, uh, in Pisa. And uh, okay, so I'm really done now. Um, uh, I think I will, again, thank you for your attention and I will not uh, go through in detail to the conclusion. So I think I, taken quite some time already. So thank you very much. Well, thank you, uh, Federica. It was very, very nice. Okay. Um, the, stage, the stage is open for a question. I suggest that you can maybe unmute yourself and ask question. Can I, can I ask my, my question? Go ahead. Uh, yeah, okay. Thank you very much. It was very pedagogical, very enlightening. So thanks for taking care, taking the time to explain things, uh, Federica. So I have a, Thank you. a question. Uh, so um, I was wondering, okay, I, I'm very intrigued by the exact factorization and also how DFT can come into play in this scheme in one way or another. So I have like two questions. 
The first one, because you said that there is all the job that quantum chemists have to do to provide the non-adiabatic coupling. So can DFT or TDDFT be useful there? And the other question is if yes, can we explain this rigorously? Can we understand that or, or is it still challenging or are there still open questions about the combination of DFT with this exact factorization? Uh, so, um, thank you for the question. So, um, yeah, uh, so the, the work on oxyrane uh, that I presented just at the beginning, in fact, uh, this work here has been done uh, by uh, with, with an implementation of uh, this, this algorithm derived from the exact factorization in CPMD. And CPMD is based on DFT and TDDFT. And so uh, basically, but okay, what we used is basically, so what we need to do is this um, kind of, so we need, at every neural configuration, we need to calculate electronic properties. So we used the, there uh, the, the linear response to TDDFT approach. And uh, so couplings, energies, and gradients, uh, they were available. So there is this uh, auxiliary wave function approach implemented there by Basil Courchot and Ivano Tavernelli. So we exploited this, yes. Okay. Um, the point is that uh, we looked at oxyrain because it has a conical intersection between the first and the second excited states, but we have we had to cut the dynamics to stop the dynamics when uh, uh, the, 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 the trajectories, or at least one of these uh, couple trajectories that we get from, from, from the exact factorization reaches the conical intersection as zero S1, because there the, the calculations can, cannot be trusted anymore. And there is this yeah. problem with these couple trajectory approaches that then basically everything goes bad. So for the moment, we, do, we don't have uh, um, a strategy to like two away trajectories. Uh, they, since the beginning, they're all covered from to each other. And so then we really have to stop before, uh, before arriving there. And um, another, another point, so this is like this, this is like from an application point of view. Um, from the more formal uh, point of view, um, Hardy has done some work from the on the on the static version of the of the factorization. Um, like um, uh, density functionalizing the density functionalizing the electronic equation. Mm -hmm. So you get like uh, an electronic equation in a rule where you just basically express your electronic systems with the with, with the density, and then this is coupled to the nuclear or Schrodinger equation. So many years ago, Hardy was interested in this um, uh, multi-component DFT, mm -hmm. and then uh, uh, he, he went instead to more towards like like splitting the problem in a density functional problem for the electrons and the time in a, in a, in a Schrodinger equation problem for the nuclei, wave okay. function problem okay. for the nuclei. But not this is not done yet in the time domain. So this is done on the on the on the uh, on the static version of the of the uh, of the um, uh, of the factorization. Okay. I don't I don't know if he if he's going towards uh, he was always in his mind to do some kind of TDDFT approach uh, for the electronic equation keeping the nuclear time dimension equation but uh, I'm not sure if, he, if this has been uh, has been uh, followed up. Okay. Well, yeah. very clear answers. Thank you very much. Thanks. Yeah, you're welcome. Nice. Very nice. Thanks. Okay, I think there was a question from uh, Andreas. Hi Andreas. Hello. Just, just well you are further than 10 kilometers away. <laughs> but there are no restrictions anymore. Yes, yeah, since, since a few days, right? Yeah. Uh, well, I, in fact, I have a ton of questions. Very good. <laughs> but no, what I will ask, uh, well, I details or so, I will ask a very primitive one. So how do the initial conditions of this time-dependent process enter? Uh, because you said that you are doing instantaneous process and, but I think even in the ground state, if you bring two subsystems together fast or slowly, it's, it's yeah. not the time evolution yeah. is not the same. And yeah, yeah. So um, yeah, for instance, yeah, this uh, so this uh, uh, instantaneous vertical excitation is very often used uh, in uh, in this uh, in this context and uh, is actually easy to treat. And uh, I've been recently working on, uh, and it doesn't work so far, so maybe I shouldn't really say it, but okay. So I, I need to look into the problem a bit uh, more carefully. Uh, I like thought about uh, like 
explicitly uh, in, uh, treating uh, uh, or including in the Hamiltonian the laser that induces uh, uh, the, the, the excitation, for instance. And um, this, I mean, I was expecting it to be a, an, easy, an easy problem, and instead it's not. And uh, my feeling is that um, um, it's related to, maybe here I'm going a bit too technical, it's related to the, um, to the electronic representation for the for the electronic basis that one uses uh, for for uh, for the uh, to represent the problem but uh, so in principle yes this is uh, this is this is the question is this uh, but it also come when you want to compare with experiments for instance yes. okay so you so maybe the vertical instantaneous excitation gives you something that is give, gives you some transient dynamics so during the excitation that is different Yes. From, uh, from from the vertical excitation. So it would be nice to actually be able to have the exciting field uh, in and this uh, yes. we didn't, uh, I didn't manage yet. However, it's actually nice the results that we got with this uh, combination of the Floquet formalism, but there, uh, so the, the, the external field is treated uh, uh, explicitly in the problem, but uh, it has to be periodically, periodic. So in order to allow you to use uh, the, Floquet, uh, the Floquet states. It's, it's, this is actually, uh, yes, no, no, in fact, this is, uh, but indeed, yes, I understand that, yeah, it's, uh, I agree with you, that could be, could be an issue there, how do you do the initial excitation? Yes, yeah. it could be, so no, it's a temperature dependence, so reactions are influenced by temperature. Yeah, it's temperature, temperature, yeah, yeah, also, yes, temperature, how do you put, I, yes. It's a different way of formulating my question. But yeah, this, for this, I mean, I have an INR to answer the question about temperature, so. In June, I'm going to start thinking about it. <laughs> it's a very good, good question. It takes an hour to maybe start uh, answering the, 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 the problem. Yeah. OK, thank you. Well, next thank time you. when we meet. <laughs> next question. <laughs> yes. Thanks. OK, do we have other uh, comments or uh, questions? Because I have one that I would like to to pause myself is about the trajectories maybe mm -hmm. you can uh, share the slides again because it will be easier to describe at slide yeah between slide 15 and 16. you mentioned the trajectories this yes one, yeah huh? mm -hmm. and uh, i would like to understand because then in the slide immediately after you sort of summarize the situation and yeah. uh, here it seems that um, the exchange uh, between um, uh, the two the two the two levels the the, the, yeah. the change mm -hmm. in population comes periodically when there is a, when you are close to the to the intersection essentially yes here yeah. mm -hmm. and uh, but looking at your video it seemed that the coupled trajectories not the independent mm -hmm. one, but the couple trajectories were sort of dropping even when they were far from the. Uh, yes. Sir. Yeah. So is this this uh, real? And if it is, what is the physical? Yes. Point here. Um, so okay. The um, so the uh, now let's uh, put it this way. Let's uh, talk first about the. Um, yeah, let me let it go in the meantime. So the independent trajectories, they are forced. To, to jump when uh, so this is uh, this is like the, the, the underlying approximation of this method so the, the prescription of this method is that the light so the trajectories uh, they jump with the highest probability when uh, the, the 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 energies here are close okay yeah and uh, so this is really uh, within the, the, the this uh, surface hopping approach and uh, this is true all the time so, okay in in all cases so. uh if uh, the, so it, the, the in all cases meaning no matter the strength of this of this coupling uh now instead this um uh, the, the 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 couple trajectories instead they propagate um, with uh, with a potential, uh, or let's say they, they feel uh, a potential that is derived from the exact factorization. Okay, so this potential 
um, is, is basically the effect of the electronic wave function that changes in, in uh, the changes in uh, in time, and um, and this time dependent potential. So yeah, unfortunately, I don't have it here, but um, you can. So it, it develops some kind of, of of steps. Okay, so if you if you stop it here because otherwise we're super confused. So for depending, so the, the, the potential so evolves in time, basically following the, the evolution of the of the of the nuclear wave function, and you can see that sometimes it looks like so it is here, and then it has a step, and then. It goes here on the other on the other surface, and this some kind this potential. Uh, um, uh, this is like say what what I'm telling you about now is like what one would get from uh, uh, exactly solving the exaptorization equations. Okay. And uh, in situations where the uh, this the the, the non adiabatic coupling. Uh, the non-adiabatic coupling here between the two states, it's not strong. It actually happens um, uh, far away from, from the crossing. This, uh, uh, the, this development of these steps in this time-dependent potential is related, okay, maybe, uh, maybe I, can, I can do it here, is related to something, so to, to the moment when the, 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 the wave packet, uh, you see here, Sorry. At the moment where the wave packet uh, um, separates. So basically, you see here at this point, this time dependent potential would uh, generate uh, like uh, um, a step. When in this side it is green, then it has a step, and then in this side, in this side it follows the orange, the orange surface. And um, as you can see here, this step would appear like later on, and uh, it's it's basically in this situation here when the two when the two portions of the wave packet, the green and the blue, uh, they they're basically overlapping. It wouldn't produce any step. The step would only develop, let's say, starting from here, in fact, when the two separate. And okay. the trajectory somehow they reproduce uh, uh, this uh, step development uh, at later times. Okay, so uh, it's uh, this is now, um, so without having the potential, it's maybe a bit difficult to, to, to grasp. But uh, the moment where you have this, this step in the trajectories uh, can depend on the strength of the non-adiabatic coupling because it depends when uh, the stem dependent potential from the factorization would develop, uh, would develop the, 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 the step. And um, the fact that uh, maybe the trajectories develop in, in the simulation, develop the step a bit after, a bit later on, uh, compared to the real uh, wave position where the splitting of the, the wave packet occurs. This, is, this can, uh, can be an effect of the approximations that do not work perfectly. But the fact that the step, or they, they, they start uh, exchanging, or they start swapping, uh, not only at the avoided crossing, this is something that you get uh, also from, from the exact calculations, from the exact DBS. Okay, okay. Okay, thanks. You're welcome. Okay, any other questions? Even if it is uh, maybe three already. Uh, maybe, yeah, Florence. Uh, keeping in the same on the same subject, this does it mean that the um, the Hong La Born Huang uh, approach actually give you an insight also in the electronic um, on the surfaces, let's say the, the energy surfaces, while the, the other approach does not? Or uh, do, do you see the question? I mean, the, the once again, uh, thinking at your uh, video, the light blue dots are actually mm -hmm. following curves that, are, uh, that yes. are correct so they 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 are consistent with something that is underlying and and they give you actual information on this whereas i have the impression that the other method that the um, uh, exact uh, factorization method mm -hmm. gives you a, um, an, an effective uh, trajectory for the nuclei nuclei yes. density but actually doesn't give you any insights on the energy surfaces. Uh, am I wrong? 
so yes no no sorry <laughs> you're not wrong i didn't want to say that <laughs> i would uh, it's, I, I, it's no, no, but it's it, it's a good point. Yes, yes, no. The, 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 so the, indeed, the, the the light blue trajectories they are forced to stay on those uh, on those surfaces. Okay, and so um, it's, so it's um, somehow I mean, on one side you have information about the electronic potential because you force it into the algorithm, but. Uh, you also force your trajectories to follow a force that maybe is not the real one. Okay, so but uh, so and so and this is this is the, the light blue particles. In the other case, instead, um, you have the, the trajectory somehow follow the right uh, the right force, but but not not all of them uh, might be on the uh, on the on the on the adiabatic surfaces so they, they cannot maybe all of them may give you information about the adiabatic surfaces that you would think they are like the physical ones okay because they are they're, they're, so because uh, they are the results of the electronic of the electronic problem uh, however you can always uh, so now in order for me to actually do the simulation i have to put in, uh, well, uh, I mean, I didn't tell you how I do the actual simulations, but in principle, I mean, I uh, need to access all the electronic structural information as the other uh, um, as the other method, but then I combine things in a different way. Okay, and then also different ways. So in the, also because I have to couple uh, to couple those trajectories, and um, so in some sense, uh, in my calculation, the electronic structure information is not lost because I use it anyway. But then uh, the dynamics, uh, the nuclear dynamics is is different, uh, in some cases it's uh, it's, it's a bit better than the other than the other dynamics. So, but the information is there because I have to compute it anyway to mix together um, the quantities that I needed for my algorithm. Is this... Um... I, I think so. I think okay. it's uh, clear. I confused yes. you enough. No, no, no. <laughs> I think uh, <laughs> that was clear. No, no, I would like to continue speaking, but maybe it's too late. I don't know. OK, let's see first if we have another other points and comments, because it's already three. Normally, we allocate an hour, but of course, we can exit that for the talk. Do you have specific uh, precise question in mind, Lorenzo? Well, no, I was just uh, intrigued by, by the answer. So I... <laughs> <laughs> and I wanted to continue on this subject, but I mean, uh, I don't want to monopolize either. The... <laughs> okay, if it is a continuation of the subject, you have to do it uh, with Federica, of course, afterwards. Other points or questions? Because if not, I would propose to thank Federica a lot again. Yeah, thank, thank you. you very much. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks, um, just one point before concluding. Uh, so next uh, beginning of the month, we won't have a webinar because we have the general meeting. So I hope you can all be there. The program is already on the way. It will be ready in, uh, in a couple of uh, days uh, and it's already finalized, more or less. Uh, so I remind you is the first two weeks of June. We'll have Thursday and Friday afternoon of the first and the second week. Only the afternoons of the of these uh, four uh, four days. Okay, and uh, there will be already another uh, uh, webinar at the beginning of July that is also already planned but not advertised yet. But it will be it will be soon uh, advertised. Okay, and with this. I say, have a good weekend to all of you. Yes, everybody have a nice weekend. Thanks. Bye bye. Bye bye. bye, -bye. bye, -bye. Thanks again.